I got this headboard for free because it was in the trash. It does not look the greatest, but it has some solid MDF qualities, mainly that it is MDF, and I don't have a crosscut slut. So let's make one. I first started by cutting the curved top off of the headboard. Now since the other edge is straight, I'll be able to reference that straight edge on the table saw to eventually clean this up uh, from the jigsaw cut. Then after a quick quality check to make sure I didn't cut into the workbench, we'll take this to the table saw. I gave the wavy jigsaw river cut a clean edge by referencing the factory edge on the other side. I then flipped it around to clean up that crispy, clean, straight line. Uh, just because it was outside and while it didn't seem to have any water damage, I just wanted to have four fresh cut sides. If you're gonna get a haircut, you gotta get them all cut. All fresh cut. Now this next cut is the perfect opportunity to use a crosscut sled. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to skip to the end of this video to a finished project, so I ended up using my miter gauge to clean up the other two sides. This is also when I found out how far off level my extension wings were. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. So I just gave some extra downward pressure to keep it level. Then I did the same thing to the other side. And once the sled portion was cut to size, I measured my miter gauge slots or whatever you call them to get a rough idea of the size I needed to make the runners. I started with the width and cut the strips about a 16th of an inch overage so I could creep up on that final width. Next, I marked the height of the slots by eye and did the same thing, creeping up to the final height. Now, I did not have any washers, but I did have a strip of wood from the offcuts that was about an eighth of an inch, and this worked perfectly to raise the runners up above the table. So I slid those into the miter slot and then put the runners on top. Now, I don't recommend fastening the runners the way I did here. As you can see, I decided to place the sled down on the runners, then secure them temporarily with some finish nails. And yes, I hammered them in because I don't have a finish nailer. And everything is going according to plan. I'm patting myself on the back for my genius. I slide the sled and say, wow, this is totally attached. And then I realized it is totally not attached. So I realign everything, give a few more whacks with the hammer, and finally my dreams are coming true. Hey, kind of. From here, I pre-drill exactly one hole before my camera dies. So off camera, I replaced the battery and no matter how hard I tried, I could not record myself replacing the battery. So once I got that taken care of, I put some glue down for maximum sticky and then worked on realigning the board to the holes that I drilled. And remember when I said I don't recommend the way I did this part? This is why. I'm trusting that there will be absolutely no discrepancy with the extremely close fitting parts after I remove them and reattach them without referencing the miter slots. So I did end up having to sand the runners down a little as they were a little too snug. I also think that the wood expanded when I screwed them in a little bit as well. But after the extra sanding and fitting for about a half an hour, finally the sled was ready for a test drive. It was still a little snug right at the front, but once it was on the table, it slid pretty easily. Um, and I didn't want to take any more off of the runners for fear of making it too loose and wobbly. Because that's the first rule of woodworking. No wobbly. The surface of the sled had some actual handprints in the finish, so I sanded it down to make it more smooth and less disgusting. I did not want the residue from someone else's hands taking any credit for this mediocre shop project. In a thousand years when they dig this up at an ancient burial site, it will be my handprints on this crosscut sled. Now in order to make the fence, uh, I took some scrap 2x4s and jointed two perpendicular edges on this cute little jointer. I then used the planer and the table saw to square up the other two faces. 
That little board there will eventually become a vertical extension of the fence to remind me to keep my hands away from the sharp, spinny thing in the middle of my table. I then lightly sanded each board before assembling the sled. I referenced my workbench to align the fence and the sled, though admittedly it's not the most level thing in my shop, but it works in a pinch. I aligned the face of the fence with the edge of the sled and clamped the two together before screwing in place. Now I countersunk two two inch screws, one on each end, and this will allow me to adjust the fence if it doesn't end up being square to the saw blade. In order to test the squareness, I ran the blade through the fence about halfway and checked it with, you guessed it, a square. I like to call them capital L's, but to each their own. Now I noticed it was just off square, inversely the same amount on both sides. So I came to the realization that the fence was ever so slightly bowed, and I figured I would try to work with it before I found a new piece of wood. So I pulled it square using a clamp and countersunk a hole in the middle to hold it there. And if anyone can tell me what I'm doing wrong here, shout it out in the comments and I'll give you a cookie or microwave pizza. And after making that giant mistake, I checked for square again and what do you know, it was square to the blade. I then repeated the same steps for the back support, not really dialing in for square, as this will not be a reference for any of my cuts. And for those of you who stuck around to see if I realized my mistake in time, thankfully I did. The middle screw I used to align the fence was right in the path of my blade and could have been very dangerous as the saw tried to dig into the full length of a two inch screw. Even if I didn't lose an eyeball, I would probably poop myself from shock and would most likely need a new blade. So I drove some screws on either side and that should help me keep my fingers and my sanity. I added a few more screws to each side and sanded the bottom to keep it nice and glidey on the table saw surface. From there I did the old five cut square test. And if this is not the first woodworking video you've watched, then you probably know how this works. And if it is, somehow, please write your YouTube representative and tell them to never adjust the algorithm again. But basically you make a cut on each side, which is four cuts, and then one more on the first side that you cut, making five, uh, and measuring each corner for square. I will link some videos that explain it more thoroughly in the description in case math is your passion. And as you can see, once the five sides were cut, I measured each corner for square, and I will tell you I was honestly surprised that I did not need any adjustment, especially with that suspect fence piece. But there you have it. A simple crosscut sled that anyone can make. Thank you for watching this meager shop project video. Uh, and if you enjoyed it, consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing. This is my first project video ever, and I appreciate you sticking around to the end. Unless you skip to the end, just maniacally tapping the right side of your screen like a madman. If that's your game, I wish you the very best luck in a very specific type of drumming career. Anyways, see you next time.